Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Rabia Sajad from Anatomy Department, Sahara Medical College, and I am today I am going to discuss general anatomy of muscle. I have divided this section in two parts. Initially, I am going to discuss the introduction and structure of muscles, and uh, then uh, the general classification of muscles. In the next section. we'll discuss about the details of skeletal muscles and their classification the muscle word is derived from mus which is a latin and it means mouse so most of the vertebrate muscles resemble a mouse with their belly and tendon so they named it a muscle that's why Now muscular system is composed of a group of tissues that makes your body parts move and a few facts that we have over 650 major muscles in the body and they work the same uh, way and over 50 of those muscles are in your face alone it takes 17 muscles to smile and over 40 muscles to frown so it's better to tire less muscles hmm? the strongest muscle in your body is masseter which is present around the jaw and uh, responsible for the mastication also the most active muscles are those present in your eyes they move more than 100000 times in a day what are the characteristics that differentiate muscle tissue from other tissues First of all the muscle tissue should be able to receive and respond to a nerve stimulus that means it is excitable then after receiving that impulse or stimulus it is going to show some changes either it can shorten and thicken by decreasing its length or it can relax and lengthen that uh, category is known as contractility when it's shorten and extensibility when it lengthens and then uh, after the impulse is gone the muscle is also able to restore its normal or neutral state that characteristic is known as elasticity now with those characteristics the muscles are able to produce movements the movements can be re related to um, locomotion that is walking running or even part of the body moves like picking up a book then involuntary movements can also occur like heartbeat which is occurring the whole day and peristaltic movements of git even in the neutral tone the muscles they are able to maintain the posture and stability of the body during their activities they produce heat energy and also are responsible for maintaining the internal heat of the body then they also are supporting the soft tissue within the body cavities and protecting them then they are also present as sphincters around the openings and exits of the body like a sphincter sphincter anal sphincter urethral sphinx sphincters then the highly sophisticated activities which are related to human are the activities of the muscles of face which uh, show happiness sorrow grief all the expressions certain terms are related to the muscular tissue and their prefixes used in those terms are myo mes sarco so if we hear these terms we should know that they are related to the muscular tissue so for example sarcoplasmic reticulum is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle and which is res responsible for the calcium level regulation for muscle contraction and we have sarcoplasm which is the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber or myofibril and it is responsible for maintaining 
ATP levels for the contractility and it has high amounts of mitochondria then we have glycosomes that store sh- the glycogen and then we have myoglobin protein which is going to store oxygen at the level of muscular tissue sarcolemma is the word used for the plasma membrane of the muscle tissue an important uh, structure which has some protrusion inside the cell as t tubules and we are going to find out that these t tubules are responsible for initiation of contractility as contractility is the main characteristic feature of muscular tissue that is uh, there because of the presence of some specific proteins which are myosin and actin the main proteins which are responsible for the contractility but there are certain other proteins as well which act as binding proteins the most important of that is dystrophin which are going to be responsible for the formation of the uh, sarcomeres the units uh, present in the muscular tissue especially the skeletal and cardiac muscles commonly we describe three types of muscular tissue the skeletal muscle cardiac muscle and smooth muscle which are structurally and functionally uh, quite different entities but when we uh, discuss criteria of uh, classification they usually lie in some common jurisdictions as well for example if we do anatomical classification then we um, divide the muscles into two main categories striated and non striated muscles so two of them like skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle they fall in the category of striated muscles while smooth muscle fall in the category of non striated muscles then again if we um, divide the muscle according to the function they come into the categories of voluntary involuntary muscles so here only skeletal muscle lies in the category of uh, voluntary muscles while cardiac and smooth muscles lie in the category of involuntary muscles so basically we discuss these three types of muscular tissues first and then the different criteria of classification associated with them skeletal muscles are the most abundant uh, muscles in our body they make up 40% of the body weight and they are related with the skeleton and they are more or less voluntary muscles of the body with a few exceptions as some skeletal muscles may be related to reflexes for example in blinking our eye muscles they act even when we are not uh, making any intention microscopically the striations of skeletal muscles are way more prominent and well defined as compared to cardiac muscles so these are making up the prominent category of striated muscles uh, the cells are elongated cylindrical they are non branching and they are multinucleated so we can see this is one single muscle fiber if you can start from origin up to insertion there is one single muscle fiber which has striations due to the patterns of uh, the protein and these are multinucleated cells and nuclei are lying just below the sarcolemma here we can observe them mostly they are in control of our somatic nervous system and they are mostly related to the skeleton and body walls we can quote many examples like muscles attached to upper limb lower limb long bones then we have diaphragm the tongue muscles muscles of eyeballs muscles of facial expressions etc cardiac muscles make up uh, the middle layer of the heart known as myocardium they are only present here and uh, they are involuntary muscles controlled mainly by the conducting system of the heart but that can be modified by the activities of autonomic nervous system 
we can see that the cardiac muscles are also striated muscles as they have arrangements, uh, proper patterns of sarcomere of uh, myosinectin proteins, but they are not as prominent as seen in skeletal muscles. We can also observe that the cardiac muscles are also cylindrical muscles, but uh, opposite to the skeletal muscle, they are branching and they are very short. A skeletal muscle fiber extends throughout the muscle length from one end to another and it, it has to be innervated by an independent axon ending to be uh, participating in the contractility of the skeletal muscle. While cardiac muscles, they are branching, they are linked to each other at this structure which is known as intercalated disc and uh, these are gap junctions basically so the cardiac muscles they can act like a unit the cardiac muscle of one chamber act as a syncytium like one muscle is activated the whole of the syncytium will be contracting but they are isolated from the cardiac muscles of the adjacent chambers Another important feature which differentiated from the skeletal muscle is the nuclei. The cardiac muscles are uninucleated cells. You can observe one uh, nucleus present in the center of the cell. And sometimes uh, the surrounding region of the nucleus uh, appears empty because in slides the glycogen stored around the nucleus is washed off. This is known as a perinuclear halo. The smooth muscles as their name uh, suggests, they are smooth in appearance, they are non-striated muscles as they do not have the arrangement of uh, sarcomere units in their structure. But this doesn't mean that do, they do not have the contractile proteins. The smooth muscles do have the contractile proteins as a muscle cannot be identified without them. The contractility is basically associated with the proteins. They are fusiform or spindle shaped muscles, very short and they have a single central nucleus lying in the wider part of the cytoplasm and the alternate arrangement is like that. The belly of one muscle is present over the tail of other muscles. So they adjust each other and they are surrounding our organs, blood vessels and they are in involuntary muscles. For example, in GIT, they are responsible for the peristaltic movements. In blood vessels, they are responsible for vasoconstriction, vasodilation. Then the smooth muscle associated in the skin are erector pili muscles. They are responsible for the erection of hair shaft as in goosebumps. This is important to compare all the three types of muscles. So they are compared on the basis of different categories. First of all, the fiber dimensions. Uh, the diameter of skeletal muscle is 100 mm and the length is up to 30 cm. So these are very long muscle fibers. While cardiac muscles in diameter are 10 to 20 mm and their length is up to 100 mm. So they are very short muscles. The smooth muscles are also short uh, diameter 5 to 10 mm and their length is 30 to 200 mm. The nuclei um, in skeletal muscles are multiple and they are present near the cell membrane while in cardiac muscle and smooth muscle they are centrally located. Filaments uh, are arranged in skeletal and cardiac muscles as sarcomere units. They make a property tubular and protein arrangement system while in smooth muscles the yeah. filaments are not properly arranged like this but they are associated with dense bodies scattered all around the sarcoplasm. Sarcoplasmic reticulum or the smooth muscle of cardiac and skeletal muscle they show proper network with the largest uh, bodies associated with the T tubules which are called terminal cisterns. In skeletal muscle, they form the triads, while in cardiac muscles, they form dyads. In smooth muscle, there is no such arrangement of the sarcoplasmic reticulum as there are no tubules. Neural control of the skeletal muscle is through somatic system. 
and we can observe the neuromuscular junctions at single skeletal muscle fibers level. Then the control of cardiac and smooth muscle is via autonomic nervous system and cardiac muscles are also controlled by their own conducting system and modified by the autonomic nervous system and hormonal control. Calcium, which is responsible for initiation of the uh, movements of the myosinectin proteins, is released in cardiac and smooth muscles uh, from the terminal cisterns of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, while in smooth muscles they are present in the extracellular fluid. Contraction in skeletal muscle is rapid onset and uh, there is rapid fatigue as well. That also depends upon the type of skeletal muscle though and also on the myoglobin protein present in the skeletal muscles. While cardiac muscles and smooth muscles, they are slow onset, they are not easily fatigued. The slow onset cardiac and smooth muscles have aerobic respiration for their source of energy, while skeletal muscles use both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. When they use anaerobic respiration, they are fatigued easily because of lactic acid accumulation. Coming towards the end of this section, the three commonly used types of muscles can be classified based on different categories. So first we have already discussed the structural classification is the two groups of muscles, striated and non-striated, where the striated muscles can consist of uh, cardiac and skeletal muscle, while non-striated muscles include smooth muscles. Functional categories include voluntary and involuntary muscles. Skeletal muscles are included in voluntary group, while cardiac and smooth muscles are included in the involuntary group. Now there is another category which is the developmental category. According to development, most of the muscles they arise from mesoderm. So almost all the skeletal smooth and cardiac muscles are mesodermal in origin. There are some exceptions. Uh, for example, the smooth muscles, erector pili muscle which is present in the skin and the smooth muscles of iris like the dilator and sphincter pupillae muscle and also the myoepithelial cells uh, present around the SNI of glands, they are ectodermal in origin. And now that you have covered the general embryology, on the evolutionary basis, the muscles are also divided into two main groups. Number one are the somatic muscles, which are associated with the body wall and they are under the control of somatic nervous system and they are derived from the myotomes. And uh, the other category is the visceral muscles, which are um, formed from the mesenchyme surrounding the endodermal tube or the gut tube. They are not derived from the myotomes and are under the control of autonomic nervous system. Now the somatic muscles are again divided into two parts. The somatic axial muscles, which are related to the trunk and the somatic appendicular muscles which are related to the upper and lower limb. While the visceral muscles are also divided into two groups, the visceral asso uh, muscles associated with the gut tube and um, other internal organs, they are smooth muscles. While the visceral muscles associated in the neck region with the pharyngeal arches, these are exceptions. They are um, striated uh, muscles, skeletal muscles derived from the pharyngeal apparatus. For example, the, the muscles of mastication, the muscles related with the middle ear, etc. In the next section, I will discuss the anatomy of skeletal muscle, its organization and then the important classifications which are asked in our examination. Thank you.